there's a big buzz about digital and big data in healthcare. Investment in this area has doubled in the last year and will be five times more in the coming years. Apple launched HealthKit. Google's using glass and analytics in healthcare. Small sensors are embedded in medical devices, wearables, all creating a vast amount of new data. 78% of people want to use mHealth. There are literally thousands of applications involving health available. This is very exciting. It's very, especially exciting for someone who's worked in this field for so long. Um, but the, I think we're missing a point. All of the technology in the world isn't going to work if we can't connect the data and use it to change the way we deliver healthcare services and engage patients in understanding their own decisions around health. Now, professionally, I've been interested in this for 20 years. I started, obviously, when I was very small. Uh, <laughs> um, and since the early days of the dot-com boom, I have been fundamentally convinced that technology can and will change healthcare. Personally, it's an issue that's very close to my heart. When I was 16, my grandmother died because of an error in surgery. Her death, and so many others, could have been avoided had the right information been exchanged. We have literally poured billions of dollars into healthcare IT. And despite the promise of electronic records, the information we need to manage healthcare is either missing, incomplete, or inconsistent. We are significantly behind other industries in terms of using data. Yet the irony is that information lies at the very heart of healthcare. This is our starting point for digital. Let's just be real here, okay? All of the exciting technology exists, but here is the starting point. This is the picture of the room where medical files are stored at a leading children's hospital. Today. Well, last week. <laughs> Each of these paper files includes vital information about a very sick child. They have an electronic record. And yet it's easy to see how vital information can fall through the cracks. So what are we doing about this? Well, as we automate this pile of paper, and as systems mature, we will have new information to understand what and who causes those medical errors. But even more exciting will, we be, will be that we have electronic clinical information to do different types of analysis. IBM's Watson and other computing platforms will take information from devices, images, and clinical records to improve the decision support uh, for doctors. This is exciting. We will also see advancements in the use of genetics. So with the cost of genomic sequencing declining, we will combine information in clinical practice with our genomic sequence, and we will understand more how to personalize care. And we will also see advances in technology, such as 3D printing, creating new organs and new bones, which replace failing parts in our bodies. Now, all of these technologies and the advances in science are really, really, really exciting, but it's the data and how we use it, that is the real story. We need to use the data that we have to improve our understanding of what works and what doesn't. Kaiser Permanente is a large group of hospitals in California, well known across the world for their advanced use of information in their electronic record. By analyzing their clinical data, they could understand that giving a patient a particular drug within 24 hours, a heart attack patient, a certain drug, within 24 hours, they cut the death rate by 50%. 50%. Now, this was a drug that is on the market, proven effective in clinical trials, and yet the impact of clinical practice wasn't known. Until they analyzed the data, Kaiser didn't know that they could have doctors saving more lives. So that's the data that we have. We also need data about outcomes 
to understand how we can improve what really matters. Now, outcomes data um, doesn't typically exist in electronic records. It exists in separate registries for research, or perhaps not even at all. There is a significant evidence base that shows understanding clinical outcomes improves clinical practice. And understanding clinical outcomes accelerates, this information accelerates our learning and understanding of what good looks like in healthcare. Walk with me to the Martini Clinic here in Germany. The Martini Clinic is a specialized prostate cancer facility. They have used outcomes data to consistently improve their clinical performance over the last few years. And the results are incredible. This facility, because they've used outcomes data, have been able to show that a patient after prostate surgery only has, uh, suffers from incontinence 7% of the time, when at the average German hospital, that will happen 43% of the time. Guys, I wouldn't take my car to a mechanic with a poor service rating. <laughs> Why would you take shall we say, important equipment anywhere else. <laughs> Now, with improvements in outcomes and our understanding of outcomes, we will accelerate our understanding of, of what improves clinical practice. So this is really exciting. We are getting so close to understanding where in the world we can get better treatment. We are working with Karolinska Institute, Harvard Business School, and 200 providers in 12 countries to create a standard set of outcomes measure for important conditions. We are so close to understanding where in the world we can get the best treatment. And I ask you, where would you go if you had to have prostate surgery? This information will be part of the TripAdvisor for healthcare because we will actually understand it. Now, hospitals, everybody talks about hospitals, but actually two-thirds of our healthcare spending is outside of hospitals. Here is where I think digital gets really exciting, because we finally have the opportunity to connect in different ways with our patients. Digital will be a real channel for reaching customers or patients, as it is for retailers, for travel, for banks, and for any other industry. In the future, you will be able to communicate with your doctor, via video chat. You will upload information from your smartphone to help him with his diagnosis. People in remote locations will receive important text reminders and important medical information. Your doctor might also accept a selfie at a certain point to help with his diagnosis. He might use it actually in comparison to a database of other selfies from around the world. We will, um, we will see reminders in pills and in pillboxes that remind you to take your medication. And we will see um, you going to social media sites to ask about the patterns of treatment or the experiences that you have about your own health care. Apps, in some cases, obviously not all, will replace doctors and pills. We have the first instance of that in the United States, WellDoc, a simple application for diabetic patients. Basically, it takes information about diet and exercise, blood glucose readings, and provides regular coaching for people around the management of diabetes. Interesting. I'm sure you could think of a lot of examples. It's prescribed by doctors. It's reimbursed by physicians. It's not a drug. It's not a device. It's an app. So interestingly, all of this stuff, all of those examples exist today in pockets. This is not about new technology. This is about the data that we get from these applications and how we use it in three ways. First, we will understand more about how to keep people out of hospital. This is an example of COPD, which is a um, lung disease. It's a chronic condition, and it basically people become admitted to the hospital on a regular basis. An app can help these people. This app could help people with inhaler technique. It could help people with using their drugs more regularly. It could help them with exercise. It could help them with stopping smoking with peer support. 
Now, these are not your people who are wearing Fitbits and you know, actively training for a marathon. And yet, we know so little about these people. If a retailer, if you might have read the article about Target, if a retailer can predict from a customer's shopping behavior that she is pregnant, and even estimate her due date, which actually is well published, why can't we in healthcare use data to predict and understand what's happening with these patients? If pharmaceutical companies were to focus on this, understanding people's behavior and how to influence and how to keep people out of hospital, in addition to understanding how to use their inhalers, how much more impact could we make? There's another area of impact that we would have, which is around organizing for around community services. Now, if I can get a taxi using an app on my iPhone that connects me with available apps around the, around the corner, how better could we organize community clinics, home care workers, and social workers? This is a significant part of where we spend our money in healthcare. We don't have to wait for fully automated, all singing, all dancing records. We can use the data that we have today. An interesting example, staying with my COPD ex example, using existing data is this. Here we did an analysis of you know, where people in the northern part of London actually have COPD, more than the London average, which is the brown, and where they have less, which is the green. And we combined a different data set, which we had to use an internet search for because from the public health service, we couldn't figure out where the clinics were, um, which is an issue of in itself. But actually, when you see the, the green dots, that's the location of the clinics that the people need to stay out of hospital. There are more clinics in the green areas than in the brown. And in some of the areas of the brown, there aren't clinics at all. We can use data to segment populations, understand risk factors, and organize our services in a completely different way. So, the title of my talk, Will D Digital Disrupt Healthcare, or Will We Die Waiting? So, it indicates a bit of my frustration, <laughs> having worked 20 years in this field, about the lack of progress. It also indicates my optimism that we are finally getting close to a tipping point of very exciting things that could happen in healthcare. This is not about technology. The technology exists. This is not about fully integrated electronic records and solving the world's privacy issues. That's so complicated, I don't think it'll happen in my lifetime. What this is about is using existing and new data and combining that in a way that will improve the services that we deliver to our patients and engage people and patients in their healthcare in new ways. If we can start to figure this out with existing data, we can start to solve the problems, and less people will die waiting. Thank you. <laughs>